welcome everybody and thank you for tolerating my not being able to parallel process. Um, so I think we do we have Christians on and he is muted and he's unmuted and muted and Craig Robinson. Craig, I saw you're going to do an OKD uh, live stream, so good on you for that. Thank you. Hello, Christian. So in the chat is the um, the link. Hey, everybody. To the um, attendee list. So if you go up to top and um, and add your names in there, that would be wonderful. Um, and so I'm going to kick it off right off the bat, so I can catch my breath from the last meeting and catching up here. And ask Christian to give a little update on um, where we're at with OCP 4.5, OK, and how that impacts OKD GA, et cetera, et cetera, and um, swear everybody to secrecy. Um, all right. So um, we we're still making progress, um, and we're still, um, I think, on schedule with regards to releasing very shortly after the OCP 4.5 release. Um, so the OCP 4.5 release date, um, GA for 4.5 OCP, has now been set, I think, for the 13th. If there's no um, no more hiccups, it'll it'll uh, be next week. And then, um, yeah, one, two, or three days after that, we will go GA with OKD as well. Um, so, uh, yeah, in the MCO, the dual support has merged. Now, one thing that's missing still is actually flipping the switch um, and migrating the internal state, the rendered machine config um, to ignition spec v3.1, which is what we'll also be using for OKD. Um, that is in the making, and we're not actually blocking on that because it'll it'll get merged. Um, that's uh, that's for sure, and. Um, we can just take that code and uh, also go GA with that in case it doesn't merge before. Um, but yeah, so almost all the uh, the differences between um, OCP MCO and OKD MCO have been resolved, uh, which is great. Um, with the installer, we, we will carry the fork a little bit longer, but um, yeah, as we've discussed before, that's not a blocking issue for going GA. So um, we're all set, and it looks really good. Wow. Do, do we want to go ahead and cut a release candidate, like may, maybe this week, for, for folks that um, were attempting to use Beta 6 that hit a couple of the issues um, that, that have been fixed in the nightlies? I, I know one, probably one of the bigger ones was anybody deploying with a um, mirrored registry. Um, couldn't use beta six. They had to had to use one of the nightlies after the fix. But if we go ahead and cut an RC, that will give them something to to work off of before we cut the final GA. It also would line up very well with how we traditionally have made you know releases. We don't just like aside from Fedora, who has this, and even Fedora still does this. Like there's an RC, a, a candidate before we go to the final. And like if we're we're talking about releasing a final within two weeks, right? Let's let's go ahead and cut an RC this week. Is there is there any particular reason we shouldn't? Um, no, there isn't, and we're actually planning on doing that. Um, so I know Vadim. Oh well, Vadim and I and Clayton Coleman I met yesterday to discuss um, the uh, the technicalities, the signing, and everything. Um, so Vadim is going to take care of that. I'm not sure if he's here. Um, he can probably say a little bit more to that, but yeah, we're going to be doing a, an RC release. Right. Um, we're waiting for the change the release controller to roll out. That would enable us to sign releases with a trusted signature. That means you would be able to upgrade from beta 6 to RC without forcing it. And another thing we're waiting for is um, a switch to the stable Fedora CoreOS. We will leave testing the stream on 4.6, and once the next machine OS content promotes, we would be able to update the nightly. So, uh, yeah, RC is certainly happening. Oh. Is 
is um are the four dot six nightlies uh in a state that we could start playing with those now too? Yes, they should be. They are not much different from four dot five though, uh, because the rebase on the newest cubelets hasn't yet happened. But once it does, okay. we will have them free. Okay. Okay. So yeah, 4.6 4. isn't um, is still that's the current uh, development window. So there's definitely changes happening there. Um, I mean, you, you can always uh, start playing with them, but I wouldn't expect. Um, and and there's no no stability promise. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> so in the chat, um, Craig Robinson's asking about um, issue. Uh, 167, the collect images built by Fedora and reconfigure sample operator to use those um, and asking if there's a way he can help with that. Is that? Oh, so like, so Craig, this would be, so what would be super helpful is if you um, join the Fedora container uh, SIG that exists. I mean, Christian has the details for this. I think he can share that with the, with the group either in the chat or via email or whatever, but like, um, join the Fedora, Fedora container SIG, which is right now kind of dormant. And we can, we're, I, I think we, uh, Christian and I talked about this before, we want to revitalize that, use that to build a content library um, that helps support container development and container-centric workloads leveraging Fedora technologies. I, I think that's a, the appropriate marketing wordage for this. Um, uh, yes, it's mostly lack act, lack of active members. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, I think you said it all. Um, we should get going on that um, rather sooner than later. Yeah, um, um, this is actually probably a good time to start like finding interest in people and then just getting that, getting revitalizing that SIG because like the extent of what that SIG does right now is press the button to push the base container release out every every release cycle. And and that's just not what that SIG was set up to do. That SIG was set up to do a whole lot more. And it's just um, a lot of the churn in OpenShift 3 and a lot of historical friction made it so that the efforts that were planned for that, which we are talking about now, just never came to fruition. And hopefully now with better buy-in from the OpenShift side, this whole operator story and like this idea of like leveraging some of the stuff we're doing in Fedora with modularity and things like that. We can, we can have a much better story of leveraging Fedora content with OKD. And so like I, uh, we should, we should prioritize starting to, to do that work. So what I would suggest too, is that maybe we do a, a joint meeting with that group, um, mm -hmm. the working group and Fedora post the GA release and maybe even sure. I'd have to say post KubeCon EU um, <laughs> post so, post Diane being you know wiped out yeah but I well I think that's one of the things that I wanted to talk about was I wanted to post um, something to promote uh, the GA um, around KubeCon and KubeCon always has a day zero thing and I am not hosting a gathering on day zero so whoa I know well, because they moved the date so many times, I just couldn't. I just couldn't. And, That's fair. Um, I did see the emails about them keep shifting everything around, and it's just. Yeah. Now we're gonna we've got, we've got a bunch of other gatherings, but I was I was thinking about how we promote the GA now. Um, and one of the things, and I've floated this by the group before, is is to do um, an open open OKD working group um, event of something maybe on the 17th. Um, in parallel with everything else everybody's doing the day before the real KubeCon stuff happens. KubeCon is um, the 17th of August and then the next three days after that. Um, and, you know, Red Hat will have a presence in the expo hall in the booth and a bunches of people will be talking about everything from operator framework to, you know, the 4.5 release of OpenShift, et cetera, et cetera. But I was thinking that um, maybe, and I'm trying to think of something that's a low effort thing for everybody because we're all busy um, but I think um, Joseph's put it here is that uh, in the in the question here is actually what I was thinking of doing was asking people from this group to take a slot and show live live coding if you if you're with 
live streaming deploying on each of the available platforms. Um, so just stagger a whole bunch, like here's OKD4 on GKE, on EKS, on AWS rather, or whatever, bare metal, and just, and, and Craig on your home lab, whatever, but just like stage a whole bunch of them at different times and have a live stream basically going the whole day that um, those of us who are on this call pay attention to. I can moderate it um, and, and host it, but um, basically have an open um, OKD working group. Here it is. And if you want to know about it on this platform, come at this time, come at this time and just I, and it, it will be fluid because demos will break and so it will take longer on other people's platforms than, uh, you know, different things. And some things are may, you may want to have a video backup for. But um, if that's something that people are interested in, what I was going to do, and if you're willing to, yeah, and, and I would put an email to the list and then just give people a sign up for what they want to demo. And, and you can repeat, like if two people want to do vSphere from their different perspectives, or they could collaborate and do it, because there's plenty of time in the day, I think, depends on <laughs> how long things take. Um, but I think it's something that we could do um, as a way to promote OKD4 and get more eyeballs on it, um, as well as I can capture more content. But um, that was one thing that I wanted to do. And around the GA, uh, I am going to draft, finally, an article or not probably not for Fedora magazine because I can't move that fast to get their deadlines in, but a blog post for openship.com and I was going to ask um, and send a note to the mailing list if people were willing who are using end users who are willing to or partners or whomever are using OKD to get supply a, a quote um, about you know what's great about OKD for why they're thinking about it what you know where they think it should go kind of thing so um, because I, I need to do that bit. And the other thing is, yes, Joseph, we are getting t-shirts made with your logo on it. Um, and what I'm going to do is send around a, hopefully what's going to happen is there'll be a promo code where you can go put the promo code in and um, pick the size and the style of the t-shirt, you know, if you want a women's or a baseball shirt or whatever, and print it and have it sh drop shipped to you. That's what's taking long is because uh, in Canada, there are some rules about sending swag across borders, um, and everything costs extra duty charges. So I probably pay double the duty plus the T-shirt. So those are the three things that I was um, wanted to bring up today. Is if people are willing, I will organize a live stream on the 17th, not during KubeCon official days, but during the Day Zero event, um, and. And we can set up a schedule and people can sign up for different slots to speak. And I may rejig things so that it flows a little bit better, but um, if, if you're willing. Does anybody on this call have a, a talk at KubeCon um, coming up? Nobody. I didn't think we did get anything in. So cool. There's a little guerrilla marketing here. So um, we'll see. And, and I'm not positive who will come because there's so much going on, but I think it's a good thing to run and then just promote it. So I'll tie that in if we do it on the 17th to the blog post about the GA saying it's going to happen on the 17th. I have to get the producer yeah, August, for the... August again? 17th? Yeah. Okay, okay, not July. I have to make sure that the producer for the live stream is willing to um, produce it all day and sit there and let it run on his box. Um, but if not, um, I may just run it um, live stream from my machine here on just onto YouTube as opposed to Twitch and everything else. So it's just live there. Or maybe just an open blue jeans prime time. I don't know. We'll figure out something. But um and so Joseph's asking a couple of so that's that's what I wanted to put on the table. I will put it on the OKD working group um and share the blog post with folks um that way too. I'll do it not in my Red Hat account but with my um D Mueller 2001. So if you see that float through, um, you can do that. Yeah, Craig, nobody heard back on talks from KubeCon, so don't feel bad. There were thousands and thousands of talks submitted for each of, I think maybe three, 400 slots, speaking slots. It was insane this time. And it's even. Well, because it's all virtual, now it, like, it's essentially easy. 
to get to do a talk, sort of. It is. To some people. Yeah, it is and it isn't. It's like, it's a challenge. It's not the challenge of it's easy for people to give a talk, but even prior to going to virtual, thousands of people for each slot submitted. And it's just getting even more crazy. But um, it's also, there are so many other virtual events that we can hit on. So if you see other virtual events that you think we ought to be speaking at, um, let me know and I'll see what I can do um, to get you in there. There's also, I just spoke with, uh, there's an open source Fridays thing that GitHub is doing. And I was um, gonna put uh, this working group or this effort, OKD, as one of the potential projects for, to showcase on that um, as well. So Christian, watch for, Christian and Vadim and others, watch for that. And uh, we'll see if we get a slot there. But I think now is the time to just really um, perfect our pitch. Yeah. So anyways, um, don't lose track of Azure support if OKD4 is GA. I promise I won't, Joseph, okay? No, we will we'll be checking back on that. Um, unfortunately, that's really something that the Fedora infrastructure has to work out and legal. Oh my God, it's such a mess. Like, dude, so, it, yeah, it, we, been... all want to, we all want to fix Azure, but like we literally can't. We are hamstrung right now. There is... It, 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 yeah. If any of you are Red Hat customers, just just use that to go bug the right people because like we can't do anything Fedora side. I I I, I literally can't do anything. <laughs> Nobody can. <laughs> yeah, it's been with Red Hat Legal, um, I think, for a while now, and um, at least yeah, three years they, at they, this they, point. <laughs> yeah, they they can't sign the. The, con the Microsoft provided contract and um, need some changes there. So it's it's it seems to be difficult um, to get an agreement there. But uh, yeah, yeah, Mike, it is essentially the same situation with the WSL thing. As basically, it's the I don't have the details because I don't work for Red Hat. So like everything is hearsay or whatever that word is. Um, it is basically. Neither the Microsoft people nor the Red Hat people can like get in a room for an hour to hammer out their differences and kumbaya and sign the damn thing. Without well, nobody, that, we can't do anything. Nobody sings kumbaya is no longer hip. Uh, we need uh -oh. So anyway, uh -oh. <laughs> that's my generation. You guys are younger. Uh, you see hey, I was hearing it when I was a kid in the 90s. So like, there you go. There you go. It never dies. <laughs> I think it's it's definitely stuck in legal, and it's you know I, I, I think it's over all of our pay grades, and, we, and I'll nudge legal again just to see if I can get an update, but I don't I don't expect to hear anything. Yeah, three years in running. So um, so in terms of the GA release, circling back to that, yeah. Um, so it, I I think I hear the 15th of July might be around when I should have my blog post reviewed and drafted and quotes in and everything from people. Um, so it may be on the 16th of July, we would have an actual release of the GA. If I'm just trying to get the timing in my head. So you can nod Christian if you think and Vadim, if you think that's about right. Okay, so I will basically draft it in the next couple of days and share it with everybody. And um, yeah, no vacation until GA. Who's getting vacation? I'm at home. I live in paradise. Um, so, so it'll be good. Um, all right. So anything else, Christian, Vadim, anyone else we need to cover off here? Um, we had a few things, but I still don't think, I, I don't think we've gone any further with the IoT conversation. And I'm just going to share my screen again to make sure I didn't miss anything. Um, so got, I've actually... Go, go ahead. Oh, so I, I was just going to say, if we got the Fedora SIG going that was mentioned previously, would that be a place that we would do some of that ARM64 work for the IoT thing? Um, uh, good, no, not, some, not really, because that's the, no. the, the Fedora IoT thing actually has a working group for that. Um, for uh, But if we want to talk about OKD-related enablement for ARM, then we would probably be talking to Fedora Core OS SIG and, and doing uh, Fedora Core OS working group, sorry, and 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 deal with that there. God, we just need to use a consistent name for all of these things. <laughs> yeah, um, I've I've actually um, poked some people um, inside Red Hat and 
yeah, try to, to start the conversation of um, moving Fedora Core OS and Fedora IoT closer together again. Uh, so yeah, it, it's it's a long-term thing. I don't expect anything to really happen there in the very short term, but um, yeah, I'll, I'll definitely uh, keep you posted on, on any progress we make there. There has been a tiny bit of interest um, on ARM64 and OpenShift from the automotive sector folks tiny because in internal to cars and things they're they're using some oh dear um, yeah oh yeah i don't want to drive that car but anyway um that was on the air wasn't it um so yeah so there's there may be some customer use cases that will help push that forward christian so ping me after that and i'll see if i can you know i think that that's what it's really going to take for openshift proper to you know put any resources on it yeah yeah i definitely think so too um otherwise openshift to move that way there will have to be some financial uh incentive yeah or so, it's yeah, going to, or it's going to be a, a complete open source fedora iot conjoined twin with fedora core os offspring with some you know other things. I mean, I think the the real goal behind this, at least for me, would be to make Fedora IoT and Fedora CoreOS essentially the same. Um, Fedora IoT would be the ARM version of Fedora CoreOS, essentially. Um, and then we, we could also, if, if we were really there at that point, we would also uh, try to move Fedora Silverblue to that same build system. But I think the discussion really is, uh, yeah, it is still at its in the beginning because we really need to uh, decide on on one build system to to push for in, in the future. And um, yeah, there's a few options and a few just details that that need to be worked out. And because there's no coherent story about our use cases for all of them, um, yeah, collecting use cases is probably the best thing we can do right now. So I, we've got one. We've got Maya's. I think I have an automotive one that actually might have. And um, Maya, the project that Maya was talking about is actually a number of the clients that they have are OpenShift users, like Boots and uh, pharm the, the, their pharmacies in UK and a bunch of other retailers. So there actually are quite a, quite a few um, in their client list uh, that are already using OpenShift. So there's there's a connection there to a legit eventual customer story. So it's just really finding, you know, the resources and engineering resources to free up. And as I said, really nothing is going to happen until 4.5 is out the door post KubeCon. And, you know, it might be something we can talk about, you know, as in the OKD live stream at some point, get folks to come in there we go, and reboot the Fedora container stake. Is there anything else we need to touch on today? Um, I know this feels like a light one, but we've been, there was more testing on vSphere requested. Did we get that? We done enough testing on vSphere with the release, not the release, uh, beta six? I think so. We ran a couple of CI runs. And all of those passed. I haven't seen any bugs filed, so we consider it working. Okay. And um, the issue that d d I think there may actually be an issue uh, with regard to to the bringing up of the of the network interface, uh, which may be the reason it it won't work, because I think we forgot to replace. Uh, the files in the latest rebase. Is that the um, same? No, that, that's for I, UPI. Is that the that's same for yeah, UPI? Right. That's, for, that, that's for UPI, right, right. True. And mm -hmm. it's a reference Terraform. Sorry, Dan. Is that the same thing as this FCOS network naming issue that Dusty brought up? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, so that hasn't been closed or? Well, yeah, it's, it's a related thing. So um, in Dora, we, we had the issue that we were defaulting to the old naming scheme for network interfaces, while uh, Red Hat CoreOS was already using the new one, which um, was obviously, um, yeah, the, the way it was intended. And in Fedora, it was just a bug. Uh, so that's fixed. But um, 
Fedora also uh, uses a newer version of Network Manager essentially and defaults to using Network Manager key files for configuring uh, the network interfaces while Red Not Hat, quite yet. Uh, not yet. Not yet. Almost. The okay. uh, that that change has not landed yet, but it is coming. I, I like as a member of Fesco, I don't have a reason to not approve it, and I expect everyone else will be like, sure, whatever. So it, yeah, it'll I, probably I think, land. It's not there yet. Okay. Yeah. I think so, specifically okay. in Fedora Core OS, we already use it. Yes. Uh, if I'm not mistaken. So. Um, and in Red Hat Core OS, we still use IF config files. Oh my God, for, I feel so sorry for all of and, you. And, and that is already uh, deprecated in Fedora and you can't, you can't even use them anymore in Fedora. So that's why we, uh, in this vSphere UPI case, um, they're actually uh, laying, writing a file, an IF config file in the OCP installer to the bootstrap host and we had to replace that in Fedora Core OS um, with a network manager key file, obviously. And um, unfortunately, we can't use the key file in a Red Hat Core OS yet because of some missing functionality in the init RAMFS where the interface would, uh, would have to be activated. And that currently only works with uh, IF configs and not with key files. So yeah, it's an ongoing issue. It's like, it's a broader topic, but um, we'll resolve it eventually. I'm just looking through the list of things that were opened last week. So it looks like that one. This one looks older than that. Replace the Ionic, Ironic stub images with Ironic built from RDO. Did that happen? No, we would have to punt it post the GA. Yeah, I that knew that was going to happen. Bare metal. That that was only for bare metal API, though, right? Yep. Correct. It, I expected that we were going to have to punt that, which is why I said, do we really need this for GA? Because we weren't going to get it. <laughs> okay. Which means we can't build on RDO? No, It. what it means is that um, you we cannot launch an installer provisioned mechanism, an automated provisioning mechanism for bare metal. Everyone has to massage it through by hand, which is a crappy workflow, especially for bare metal, but but we don't have anything better, but maybe we will in the future. Um, mostly us skipping this and saying this is explicitly broken because of RDO like not being ready is essentially the stick I would say, like, can we get the act together so that from RDO side, so that we can actually do this for OKD side, because like that's that's basically the issue. Okay. Um, I'm thinking I'm going to host an AMA with the RDO team on the 27th of July. Oh boy! <laughs> yeah. Doesn't have anything to do with the RDO team. We just need to build OKD specific images across several OpenShift repos, which includes OKD, RDO's ironic. Okay, so it's not an RDO really issue. It's it's us building those images. I mean, they would uh, preferably do the work and add those container builds um, because they'll have to manage and, and maintain them as well uh, as part of their project. But uh, we could probably do it ourselves, add, add the files, add the Docker files ourselves. Um, I'd prefer the teams to really maintain that though. Yeah, manage and, manage and maintain it. Yeah, okay. So. Um... I do have a connection there, and so do you, Christian and Vadim. So we'll see what we can do. Um, all right, that's, I mean, that's a very short road to GA, I have to say. Um, uh, is there anything else we should cover? Christian, Vadim, anyone else? I'm not looking at the chat, so I'm gonna pause sharing for a minute. Go back in the chat. Um, I do have a discussion topic, basically. Okay, go for it. Um, once we GA, we can build releases arbitrarily, and we can name them however we want to. The question is, how often do we want those built, like a, a, a small milestones? Because those would be effectively promoted nightly. We just need to pick a nice schedule for that and naming. Anyone has ideas? We can discuss it in a. We can discuss it today, or we can 
file an issue for that? Well, I think we should file, put the issue up there. Um, my, and everyone can poop out this, but my preference is, is that we follow along, um, even if we don't, I would like to see something that informs us what release of OCP we're in tandem with or tied to. Um, I don't know how- That's the trick. It's not tied to any release. Those are parallel streams. We can have the very same schedule as OCP has, and, um, the majority of the changes from OCP would be there, but it's still not one to one. Yeah. Are Are you suggesting like our our GA release would be OKD four point five? Is, is that what you meant, Diane? I was yes. I was thinking that way, but I, I don't like the sound of it. Um, but personally, but I think release is like some I, I don't know. I always get confused when we're out of sync with the thing that we're rebasing off of, but we do that with Kubernetes anyway, so I think people, other people are used to it. I think we burned that bridge with OpenShift 4. Like, uh, in the OpenShift 3 era, we tried to keep all the versions in sync, yeah. and and I, somebody decided that, well, let's not, and burned it all for 4. So I, I think I think it's fine. <laughs> So yeah, I I think uh, what makes most sense for us is to just have this stable OKD4 stream, and whatever gets tagged into that stream um, is essentially a stable version, and it could be built off of the 4.5 branch now and later the 4.6 branch, but it'll still be the OKD4 stable stream. Um, and yeah, we, we also need to think about how often we release about the cadence, whether we want to stick to OCP releases uh, or, which is what uh, we prefer internally, I think, um, but he may, may uh, I probably have to say a bit more about that, uh, may do like a bi-weekly uh, stable release. Um, right, the difference that is that the stable stream. OKD has, o OCP has, three stable streams at any given point. This is why they're, we're making three releases weekly. In OKD, we only have one, and we will only have one for, for, any, for eternity. Um, meanwhile, we will have parallel streams for nightlies. Just a matter of picking the most stable nightly every week or, or every two weeks and promoting it as a stable version. Um, I think weekly, um, weekly seems nice, as Joseph is saying in the chat, um, unless there's some security patch or something. Um, weekly sound nice, but so far only I, me and Clayton can do that. And apparently we're still humans, we need PTOs. <laughs> this sounds like a bus yeah. factor problem. I think weekly is probably a little bit too high of a cadence, um, but bi-weekly well, or monthly. Synchronize it with um, core CoreOS releases. Yeah. If you, sync, if you synchronize it with the Fedora CoreOS cadence, that should make things relatively straightforward for planning. This is a very good point because we rebase on stable Fedora CoreOS now, which means we can give one week of stable Fedora CoreOS testing on OKD and then promote it to stable, and then in two weeks do the same, because the request has two weeks cadence. Right. So we'd just be off by one in terms of weeks. So like the alternate week would be when we push, um, and that will that should keep us relatively in line. And if something if something goes wrong, we can we can we have time to deal with it before the next uh, Fedora Core OS uh, snapshot release gets pushed out. Yeah, I think that's that's great, and we should um, discuss that with the Fedora Core OS community as well. Um, just up, at least uh, let them know that we're planning to do it that way. Um, but it, I think it makes sense. Yeah. So Christian and Vadim, can you open a, a thread on the the um, the Google group, the mailing list on that, and then um, once we come circle back in two weeks' time, then can we put a note in the the README or someplace in the documentation? about that. I'm fine with what everybody does. 
Oh, and Larry, you would ask that. Uh, Larry's asking, is OKD sent to us out of the picture permanently? Nothing is permanently out of any picture. Um, I mean, here's to hoping. <laughs> does anybody have an update on CentOS Stream? Um, so there has been um, some, or that there is some ongoing work in actually uh, pushing the Red Hat CoreOS config that is used to build Red Hat CoreOS uh, to to GitHub. It resides on a an internal repository right now, just like the Fedora CoreOS config is is on GitHub. Um, and as part of that, um, that that is sort of the CentOS Stream CoreOS config. So um, CentOS, uh, with the recently introduced CentOS Stream, CentOS Stream is actually upstream to RHEL. Well, then you know downstream is RHEL, and then CentOS is a repackaging of RHEL downstream to RHEL and way downstream um, of of CentOS Stream. It's a bit complicated, but um, so I think for us as a company, it would make sense to uh, build a CentOS Stream Core OS uh, and build an OKD um, with that. And that's the thing we have agreed to uh, to tackle after OKD GA. So I don't want to uh, say um, much about it now because uh, yeah, there's other work right now. But I think we should uh, come around and and discuss that again. Um, yeah, maybe next next uh, meeting or is there a other point, one after that. Is there anyone from the CentOS Stream group that's a point person for this that we could get to come to the next meeting? Or is it still just all Clayton and you and conversations? So I'm, I'm yeah, I'm not aware of, well, I don't really know anybody from the CentOS Stream um, team. Like, do they, does but, the CentOS stream know about this conversation, I guess, is what I'm really asking. I don't know. They definitely don't, because Carl would be completely clueless about this conversation right now. When we talk about CentOS stream people, you're muted. Um, when we're talking about CentOS stream people, there's really only two people, uh, Carl George and Brian Stinson. And I promise you, they are completely, utterly clueless about these conversations. Because nobody's talking to them about it. Okay, who is the person that raised their hand there that seems to be muted? Is it Sam or? You're still muted and I just put something in the chat because I don't recognize it. You're Adam, maybe? Who is it? Oh, OpenStack on FCOS would be fun. I want to see OpenStack on Fedora again. Like, that is a thing I would love to see again. Gilson, you you should be um, unmuted to to speak. I don't know if there's something wrong with your sound. All right. Hey, sorry, folks. We're just having a wee technical glitch. Yeah, Glitson, I think you've got a hardware fault in terms of your audio audio. Because you don't look muted. Oh, well. You got the hand wavy thing going, but nothing else. So if you want to <laughs> type it in the chat, then. Um... Or you could call by phone if you wanted to. And have fun that way. <laughs> Who does that anymore? All right. Dude, so... the, someone this morning in the Fedora Workstation Working Group had to do that because his internet connection was so bad that he was cutting out on the audio streams all the time. OK. Okay, so Gelson is saying, so no CentOS CoreOS on the plan. Is that a statement, Gelson? Nod, yes or no? Or is that a question? Oh, you're part of the pause sig. There's still a pause sig. I love you guys. Pause is the acronym that will never die. Yep, and it should. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, maybe we should uh, we should that. approach uh, the the CentOS guys uh, and yeah get, get that discussion started um, yeah you should probably talk to Carl because uh, I know Brian is currently overloaded trying to fix all the infrastructure stuff so Carl's usually the good community uh, interface point for a CentOS stream 
He was the guy that did the video for Red Hat Summit. Yeah. Oh, good. That's how I don't know who it is. Um, isn't Rich Bowen as well, the CentOS? Um, yeah, he's he's on the board, I think, or like the lead or something. I don't know what he actually does. But like he he's up there. Um, yeah. So, so. I, so I'll reach out to Rich and just touch bases with him because I know him okay. Um, and then maybe like we're like I'm thinking we should have the, a joint meeting with the Fedora Container Sig. Maybe what we do is have a joint meeting with the Fedora uh, with the CentOS Pause Sig, um, and just give them an update on what's coming with OKD4, and um, and pause that conversation for a minute because Joseph is asking a question about samples operators. Let me go back up to. Oh, hey, somebody's been building stuff for OpenShift 4 in copper. Well, then. That's James. James, unmute yourself. So can someone answer Joseph's question about the samples operator? I'm just... Is so, the so the samples operator is the thing that we were talking about filling with content from Fedora Container SIG. Okay. Um, right now, what that does in OCP is that it's filled with the UBI and the language stack and the dev tool set stuff that, that Red Hat has been doing with RHEL um, for OCP to like backfill this like this content base for developing applications in OpenShift. Um, for OKD, we want to have a similar thing mapped to Fedora. And maybe also the PASSIC could jump in and do some stuff with CentOS-based containers. I believe they have a, a broken, outdated registry that could probably be fixed and then used for for hosting this stuff, um, and so like maybe this is this is where where the passing would be useful is being able to provide CentOS based content for that stuff, especially because um, we don't have a CentOS stream based container at all for anything, and that's where a lot of the modules and extra streams and like multi version content stuff is coming in, um, and so maybe that's a value uh, a point of 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 cooperation there. We'll see. But like the samples operator is essentially the center of this conversation of Fedora Container SIG and maybe also the CentOS PaaS SIG. I'm going to pause you there for a minute because um, I'm not muting anybody. Um, but James, you're on here and you've been rebuilding the OCP4 SRPMs in Col. Can you explain what that is? And I'm just going to share that screen here. And Copper is Fedora's. Um, uh, I don't know if you're familiar with Ubuntu's PPAs, but Copper is the equivalent that we have in in Fedora. It's the community project repo system. Um, and uh, basically what James has done here is he's just taken all the SERPMs published by Red Hat and then just pushed them to be built on top of CentOS in, in Fedora Copper. So like he's just rebuilding them and then pushing them. Um, yeah, no, it, it's also, uh, Copper is interesting because it also has, it's actually one of the few um, package build system infrastructures that actually has support for integrating with Git, supporting PR workflows, um, push to master, automatic rebuild, stuff like that. Uh, well, it used to stand for cool other package repo. Now they call it community projects, which is whatever. I, so, it's I'm just. just gonna, I'm going to pause you here again. So tell me, um, I've got. I think I'm sharing my screen. Yeah, I am. Yep, you are. So what I'm looking at here is this OpenShift 4.4 running on CentOS. Yes. Okay, that's what I was. It's rebuilt essentially all the content for OCP 4, 4 um, in Copper. Okay. And is there a movement afoot to do the same thing for OKD 4? Just asking, because. Well, if we know where the serpums are for OKD, we can definitely do it. I don't even know where they are. So, like, anyone who wants so to do that. Like doing that on, on copper? I think we, yeah. we don't need to do it uh, because Fedora already provides all those dependencies for us. Oh, that's right. Um, yeah, so for most of the content, we don't need it because it's already in the Fedora repos. Exactly. We're just trying so the main... This is James. The main use uh, for this was so that I could build a CentOS-based core OS because those dependencies are not in CentOS. They're, so hence I rebuilt them so that I could use them on CentOS. And instead of trying to rebuild the Fedora packages, I just rebuilt the OCP packages because those are already known to work. Good. Thank you. That's what I was trying to get to the bottom of this conversation because um, there's always another new acronym in every meeting all day long. So, um, and I didn't know copper before. 
All right. Anything else that we should talk about today? Should we clean up outdated information on OKD? Yeah, of course we should. Um, not sure what is outdated, which links are okay, but links to bug. I thought we already cleaned this up. I thought, yeah, we had gone through it once before, but um, yeah, if you, Joseph, want to take a screenshot of it and just mark up what you think is out of date, um, I will happily clean it up again. Thank you. And just send it to me. And here's my email address, everybody, if you don't have it. It's pretty much on the internet it's everywhere. I think everything should be out of date. Uh, not out of date. Everything should be up to date, but you know, it changes. Uh, so I have a crazy idea. Um, in case anybody uh, has time next week at at this um, meeting time, uh, we could sort of spend an hour or two uh, checking everything, um, which is when we, we should have the RC release. But um, well. Yeah, we should have the RC release probably by then. Mm -hmm. So um, maybe would... just like a little hack, hack, hacking hour, uh, just to. I'd host it happily. Yeah, if you send a note, put it in the Fedora cal calendar. Um, hack on. Oh, okay. Well, hack on documentation. Any outstanding issues we we yeah. have, um, try to reproduce it, uh, fix it, and then sort of. Uh, yeah. I, I say that and now I'm just going to look at my calendar for a second, but um, you don't have to Good have idea. me here. You can do it without me, um, but I think I have it. Yeah, next, next we're talking Tuesday the 14th. Um, I could host something happily um, and we could just make sure that, first of all, all the links on OKD.io are done. Everything in the GitHub repo and the readme was accurate and walk through the docs and see what we messed up on and maybe also review. I can come back if we can do the August 17th thing and we can work on the schedule for that. And start, then I can create a little landing page for that event and um, start promoting it. That would, be, that would be a good use of time. I don't think it's a crazy idea. Clean up is good. Cool. So yeah, I'll, I'll send out a reminder and an email about that. Um, I mean, we, we we shouldn't be expecting too many issues, but like, yeah, documentation things may, they always slip. Uh, so it's probably good to just really read through the docs again uh, and everybody try their favorite platform install again and just collect any last minute bugs we find. And I can just set up, I can set up the blue jeans and we can, you can go as long as you want in it. I'll just, um, next week, same time, same place. I'll let Sounds Christian, good. Christian do that. And then, um, we can, yeah, Diane will be here and then I will, um, I might have to jump out a few times for other things, but you can merrily keep on and I'll just keep one machine running the, the, um, meeting. How much in advance do you think we'll know which nightly we're going to turn into the GA? Study. <laughs> and, and I'm asking because if we if we knew like 24, 48 hours in advance, um, those of us that had open slots in our calendars, we, we could go ahead and run a test off of that nightly just to smoke anything out. I usually just roll a dice, but we can take <laughs> down. Our, we can take <laughs> down places with a good one. I, I love that. We're just gonna roll the dice, and whichever one lands, that's we. There we go. I, I, the only thing that would have been better is like I just throw a dart. Whatever, whatever it lands on, that that's what we go with. Yeah. <laughs> on a serious topic, we now have the option to run additional tests for a particular nightly. Oh, good. So what we could do is we would wait for the signature and stable Fedora CoreOS release to actually produce a new nightly. We could pick any, run a few tests. If they pass, we will mirror it and declare it an RC. 
we could do that live, it's just going to take a couple of hours for this to complete. If they fail, we will proceed to the next one. In fact, sure. we could run several at a time, and then decide That'd be which fun to one. See. Um, cool. I'm hoping tomorrow or on Thursday we will finally have all the fixes landed, tested, and we can start choosing the RC. Sounds like a plan. So here's my new logo for the next, I don't know if you can see this, the OKD dice. Ah, yes, perfect. There you go. Now we just, we just need to, you know, vectorize it up and then turn it fancy. There you go. T-shirts and coffee cups. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, man. I'm Come on, this is the best part. Yeah, no, I'm the last person to do T-shirts and stickers. I'm, but but this one's this one's worthy. Um, so, anyways, um, I think we should have our own T-shirt store, and we'd probably make more money. Um, so that's that's I think we've covered everything. You actually own a silk screen press, actually. Ooh oh man, you're so tempting now. Jane, <laughs> you and I are going to talk. I run the Maker Fair here. I have a whole series of things. So, um, Jamie. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I don't think you expected that, Jamie, but congratulations, you've been volunteered. <laughs> yeah, much better than much better than commercially printed stuff. Handmade. Um, so that's it. Uh we're sort of at the end of the hour. And uh, so Christian, your to do right away is to book that ten o'clock next week and I will make sure I open it up. Yeah, OKD. A, pl <laughs> a platform to sell swag. And Larry, those were, were those results. Ping us on Slack, and we can do that. So there's a couple of things, Larry, you're you're looking for. And I go. Do you need to air anything? You can unmute yourself and talk, or not. Just trying to find my mute button. Sorry. <laughs> Like everybody else. Uh, no, I was good. I just searched for the open doc issues that I had opened up, and they're all closed. Cool. All right. That's a nice thing to hear at the end of a meeting. All right. I'm going to give everybody back five minutes of their time. I will post this um, video in its raw form on the working group for anyone who didn't join, um, and we'll just motor on next week. Perfect. Thank Have you, everybody. Thank Great. you. Goodbye. Thank you, Christian. Bye. Bye-bye. Awesome. awesome work. Thanks, all.